Welcome back to the Foundations Study. And today we are going to start talking about the salvations, signs, and seals. And we are looking at the sacraments here. So we are going to split this into two weeks just because I have like 25 or 30 verses with this. And so, and I am actually going to move my notes a little out of order because the baptism section is huge. Communion section is small and the introduction is medium size. So we're going to hit the introduction and communion and then we're going to come back and do baptism next time. So we are going to start in 1 Corinthians 11:26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Of course, this is a statement about the last supper. <clears throat> Um, so salvation is on the basis of grace through faith, but we have two sacraments in the Protestant church that demonstrate our devotion to Jesus Christ. They are signs. Okay. Some churches add to that. So we will look at the various positions on church sacraments throughout this next couple of weeks. So sacraments do not make us saved and they are not required for salvation but they point to the physical evidence of our commitment to Christ. Okay, the Catholic Church lists seven sacraments which are required for salvation in theirs, and the Church of Christ generally lists baptism as a requirement for salvation. Now, I am going to add an amendment to that last statement um, because I did some work for a local Church of Christ, and it does turn out that the Church of Christ Every denomination, like every in individual church, is completely autonomous to the um, to the upper group. So while there are some Church of Christ churches that reject the baptism, not all of them do. And so what that point was is that uh, in the in the general wider Christian teaching, it appears as though some churches under the the Church of Christ denomination will reject your baptism if it was not done in a Church of Christ denomination. That is heresy. As long as I am baptized and I recognize my baptism is to make a public profession of my faith in Jesus, it doesn't matter what church baptizes you. Um, but that's something that I have heard in the past, but then... Um, after learning a little bit more about the inner workings of the den denomination, which I actually have nothing to do with, um, it does turn out that individually, on an individual basis, uh, they do have their own autonomy over their own churches. So I did want to throw that out there, um, out there because it's, uh, it was written down when I wrote this and something that is widely understood. But when I dove into it, and mostly I figured this out because I was working on a website for one of our local churches contacted uh, contacted me, and I got a chance to talk with a lot of the leadership and and uh, look at you know their doctrinal statements and things like that. Uh, so just just be aware of that. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is, anyone who comes down and says you have to be baptized or you have to be baptized by our individual church, that is a problem because baptism is not required for salvation nor should one church reject the baptism of another church, except under some circumstances we may discuss under the section of baptism. But before we go, get into either of these sacraments, we want to talk about the four specific elements of these sacraments. So the first of these is they are divinely instituted. So sacraments are divinely instituted. Many church activities are not specifically commanded, but we do by example. Okay, so we pray because Jesus prayed. We sing because Jesus sang. These are not specifically the sacraments that were instituted. Okay, so uh, we're going to look, though, at Matthew 26, verses 26 through 29. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take this, eat, this is my body. Then when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. All right, so this is the inst uh, this institutes the sacrament of communion. Okay, and we will talk more about communion today. So Matthew 28 
<clears throat> verses 19 through 20. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of this age. Okay, so this is the institution of the sacrament of baptism, which we will talk about next time. So both of these are divinely instituted by Christ. That's an important thing to recognize. These are not things that were put in place by the church. That's what separates the, uh, that's what separates the sacraments in the Protestant church and the sacraments in the Catholic church, is that the Catholic church, while they extract some of these from points and elements in scripture, they were not divinely instituted by Christ. All right, so sacraments use physical objects as signs of God's blessing. Um, and no, we're not talking about ordering your, your special holy water from the television evangelist crazy guy. All right, baptism uses water and communion uses bread and wine or grape juice, I guess. Uh, so the sacraments are signs pointing to something else, salvation and commitment to Christ. They're not substances that become other substances when you use them. Okay, they are a sign. They are are just a representation, a, 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 a picture, a physical picture thereof. So an important theological point is that participating in the sacraments do not specifically save us, and the absence of the sacraments in our life do not deny us salvation. They are points of obedience, but they are not requirements for salvation. Okay, and, and you should never get baptized just because your church says, hey, we're holding baptisms for new believers. Bad reason to get baptized. You get baptized when you feel the calling of God to express your faith outwardly to the public. Okay, so be careful of that trap as well. So sacraments are a means of grace, okay, but they do not convey grace like a vending machine. So what do we mean by means of grace? I talk about the your primary means of grace in the Christian faith are prayer and Bible study. These are the ways by which God will uh, God will give us the um, the grace to understand our life, the grace to share the gospel. Well. It, we won't talk about it in a lot of detail here, but in in the uh, parable of the talents, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected, and uh, to whoever, uh, whoever uses what he has, more opportunity will be given to him. These sacraments are a measure of obedience, and if you are failing in the obedience to the little things, you may not have the greater opportunities. That's why sacraments are considered a means of grace, Okay. So we are in, to engage in baptism and communion as believers and following the life of Christ is a measure of grace, but engaging in the sacraments to gain grace is a perversion of what they're for. In other words, you're not going to make God happier with you if you engage in the sacraments. That's not what the purpose is. It's not like, hey, I'm going to engage in my sacraments so that God will fill my life with grace. No, we engage in the sacraments out of love and obedience for Christ, and then the grace shall be added to us. Okay, so sacraments are seals that we place on ourselves as identification with Christ. Okay, they are seals. Okay, the Holy Spirit is God's seal on us, but we willingly participate in the sacraments to show our seal outwardly to Christ. So those are our four elements of the sacraments. And so we're going to look at communion first, and then we will look at baptism next time. So where was communion instituted? Of course, we already looked at Matthew 26, 26 through uh, 29. Okay, so this is also repeated, and we're not going to read all these verses, just so you are aware of them. You will also find these in Mark 14, 22 through 24, and you will find them in Luke 22, 14 through 20. So, of course, Matthew, Mark, and um, Luke are called the synoptic gospels, meaning that that they, uh, they go together, um, indicating basically the same source. Some people have suggested that they maybe came from the same source material. That may or may not be true. Um, but you'll notice there, there is a striking similarity of the Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and a difference to the book of John. 
So those three areas are where it is instituted in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All right, so of course we also already looked at 1 Corinthians. Uh, let me see which verses we looked at earlier. We only looked at one verse in 1 Corinthians. So let's go ahead and have a look at this uh, from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the blood and the body of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat the bread and drink the cup. Okay, so the communion is an ongoing sacrament rather than an initial one. So baptism, we'll see, is an initial one. You really only get baptized once. But communion is a kind of an ongoing one. It, it's a, whenever you do this in remembrance of me. So it uses bread and wine. Of course, many modern churches use grape juice instead of wine. Um, I wouldn't quibble over which one of them you use. Um, and it is to be taken with humility and reflection. In other words, you don't take communion and just be like, oh, hey, it's my, it's my snack. You know, this is, this is where some parents let their kids take it just to feel like they're one of them and they're not saved. Do not do that. The next verse we didn't read, he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly, okay? So um, that is something to, to keep in mind. Don't let your kids take communion if they're not really saved. And taking it is to be a reflection, to be a humility, a time of repentance before the Lord. Okay, so the communion looks to the past of that section, of course. Uh, we saw verse 25 in the same way he took the cup and, to, and after supper saying, this is the cup of the covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. So it's a look to the past, the things that we've done in the past. Okay, the communion though also looks to the present. Okay, verses 26 through 29 there's these references for when you eat it, you proclaim the death until he comes. Whoever eats it in an unworthy manner shall be guilty. This is kind of an examination. You must examine himself in so doing. So there are measures that we look at the future. We look at our current life in Christ. That is very important. So communion then also looks to the future. Of course, verse 26, as often as you eat and drink this uh, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So that is actually important. Uh, and we're going to look at one more verse. Head on over to Mark chapter 14 at verse 25. Truly, truly, I say to you, I will never drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Okay, so we are to remember that this is also a time of the coming. We are going to have this communion. We are going to share a communion feast with our Lord and Savior in heaven. So that is our four basic principles of your sacraments and a little bit about the sacrament of communion. So thanks for coming along on this foundation study. Don't forget you can help support the channel by having a look at the links down below. I hope that you enjoy your daily walk in our Lord.